this no battery flashlight is about to get a very complex upgrade. And by the end of the video, we'll find out if all the effort was worth it. This is the same flashlight that I took apart in a previous video to show you how it works. Then I added LEDs to it, which produced a lot more light than the original light bulb. You can go watch that video in case you missed it. But today, I'm going to add a couple of extra components with the hope of getting as much power and light as possible out of the flashlight's mechanism. As a reminder, this flashlight doesn't use any batteries. It takes mechanical energy and converts it into electricity. It is well over 30 years old, which explains why originally it used this 2.5 volt incandescent light bulb. After I replaced the light bulb with LEDs, many of you wanted me to make them stay on for longer, either with a battery or a capacitor. This will happen today. However, adding an energy storage device comes with a number of challenges that we have to solve. First of all, a battery is out of the question. Even a tiny battery like this one would need about 30 minutes to charge, which would be impractical. A regular capacitor would charge almost instantly, but it would only be able to hold very little power. That is why I'm going to use supercapacitors for this project and I have several models that I want to test. A supercapacitor is still much smaller than a battery, but it can hold much more energy than a standard capacitor. Another issue is that the mechanism in the flashlight makes alternating current, or AC. However, a capacitor will store energy only in a DC circuit, so we need to convert AC to DC. The solution is to use a full-wave bridge rectifier. But this brings along another problem. Supercapacitors have a very low voltage rating. For example, this one goes only up to 2.7 volts, and this one is rated for 3 volts maximum. The flashlight makes more than that, so we need something to keep that voltage under control. Then there's the issue of LED forward voltage. That is the voltage at which the LED starts conducting, and for white LEDs, that is usually over 2.7 volts. That is why this small supercapacitor can barely keep this small LED on, even though it is fully charged. After a few moments, the LED is completely off, even though most of the energy is still in the supercapacitor. To solve these problems, I designed a circuit that charges the supercapacitor and boosts the voltage for the LED. Then I made these two PCBs with my sponsor, JLC PCB. For more than 19 years, JLC PCB has been helping engineers from around the world realize their electronics projects easily and efficiently. The company offers a variety of services like printed circuit board manufacturing, supply of electronic parts, and professional PCB assembly. All of this comes at a very affordable price. Prices for PCBs start at only $2. That is why I've been using JLC PCB for such a long time. I just uploaded my design and production files to jlcpcb.com and I got a quote instantly. My PCBs were manufactured in just 24 hours under strict quality control ensured by JLC PCB's in-house production. They arrived in the mail about a week later and the quality was great, just as expected. Do not miss JLCPCB's special offer on 6-layer circuit boards. Order your first PCB today with my link below. Now let's find out how well my design works. The first stage is a full-wave bridge rectifier. As a reminder, this is a circuit made of 4 diodes that turn AC into DC. But I didn't use regular diodes, I used Schottky diodes instead because they are more efficient. Let me show you, here I have a load in series with a silicon diode. The power supply is providing the circuit with 5 volts, but the load sees only about 4 volts. The rest is dropped across the diode. The higher the voltage drop, the more energy is lost in the diode as it's conducting. The voltage drop for these Schottky diodes is significantly lower, which makes the circuit more efficient. Sure enough, if I make a bridge rectifier with regular diodes, I get about 5.5 volts. But with the Schottky diodes, I get a higher voltage, around 6.5 volts DC. Nice. Unfortunately, this turned out to be a problem later on. You'll find out why. The second stage after the rectifier is this adjustable buck converter. Its job is to reduce the voltage so that the supercapacitors do not get overloaded. I can adjust the output voltage with this small potentiometer. Right now it is set to about 2.4 volts as you can see, 
However, I'm going to increase the output to 2.6 volts, which is just below the rating of this small supercapacitor. The good news is that the flashlight is charging the capacitor, as indicated by the rising voltage. The bad news? We don't get any light right away. It takes a while for the capacitor to fully charge. And even then, the LED doesn't stay on for long. It quickly uses the energy stored in the capacitor and the voltage goes down. It quickly drops so low that it cannot overcome the forward voltage of the LED by itself. Now comes the third stage in my circuit. On this PCB is a boost converter. It increases the voltage from the supercapacitor to a usable level. For example, here's my power supply set to 2 volts, but the boost converter gives me 3 volts at the output. This particular voltage converter can work from as low as 0.6 volts on the input, which makes it ideal for supercapacitors. Its output goes into an LED driver and a surface mount LED. Another potentiometer lets me adjust the current setting for the LED driver. I am now adjusting it to the lowest setting, which is about 33 milliamps. I'm curious to see how long this small supercapacitor will last. So I used my power supply to charge it to about 2.6 volts and connected it to the booster and driver PCB. The result is about 12 seconds of light, after which the booster starts shutting down. That is not much, but at least the circuit used most of the energy stored in the supercapacitor. For the following test, I've added a second supercapacitor in parallel, and the whole circuit is now being powered from the flashlight. It takes about 5 seconds of charging for the LED to light up. Some of the generated energy is now powering the LED, and the rest is stored in the capacitors. The voltage keeps on rising, and after about 30 seconds, the capacitors are fully charged. They keep the LED on for about 40 more seconds. Better than nothing, but not impressive either. What would happen if we use a bigger capacitor? Let's find out. The first thing we notice is that it takes 45 seconds of pumping for the LED to turn on. That is much longer, and my arm is already tired. After 2 minutes, I have only charged the capacitor to 1.2 volts. And in 3 minutes, I'm still only at 1.5 volts. My arms hurt, and I need to take a break at this point. The LED stays on for 1 minute and 23 seconds, which seems like an improvement, but I don't think it's worth the effort. This capacitor is too big for this project. After all the testing, I soldered the two small supercapacitors to one of the PCBs. For the other PCB, I 3D printed this holder piece so that it fits inside the flashlight. The two circuit boards go on top of each other and are held together by metal spacers in the corners. Then the glass cover and the bezel go in their places, and now I have a heavily modified, over-engineered supercapacitor flashlight. But was it all worth it? Well, on the one hand, putting this circuit together was a nice challenge and exercise. It is very satisfying when you build something this complex and it works. On the other hand, I still prefer the simple approach with a pair of diodes from my previous video. I get light instantly and it's much brighter, because all of the energy goes to the LEDs, we're not storing any of it for later. Also, I found a problem with my design. The voltage from the flashlight turned out to be too high for the buck converter. It gets overloaded after some time and it stops working. That is why it is a good idea to build prototypes in separate modules for easier troubleshooting. As always, leave your questions in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.